Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. In this video we're gonna build a React game. And I wanted to build one of those sliding puzzles where you have 16 tile spaces and one of them is empty so you can slide the other tiles around. Sometimes they use numbers to see that you get them in the correct order. But I wanted to make it a bit customizable so that you could set your own image and have that image as the puzzle. So let's jump into the implementation. Okay, so let's get on with building this React sliding puzzle. So I have prepared some code here that we're gonna use as a starting point and it's only the UI. So the important files are the board, the board has tiles, and I put all the game logic uh, or like helper functions for the game logic inside helpers. And I also prepared some functions there that I have tested out beforehand. Uh, and then of course I did the styling. So what we have right now looks like this. It's not functional, it's only the visuals done. Because I wanted to get that out of the way so we can focus on building the actual game and the game logic. Uh, so if we look at how the styling works, I'm just centering everything inside the app. I, I have the board um, which is using, I think this flex is maybe unnecessary as well. Yeah, the flex is not doing anything. So inside the board, the tiles are being positioned absolute. And this is just for centering the, the number inside each square. So that's the styling. If we look inside the board component, I set up a little piece of state here to keep track of all the tiles. I calculate the size of each tile based on the board size and here we see that these uppercase uh, snake cased variables they are our constants and they come from this file so we just have the board size the grid size like how many tiles are in the rows and columns and the total tile count so those are imported so we make a style object here that we place on the board so it gets the correct width and height and then we start to map through each of the tiles and then we use the tile component and what we pass in is the index the some uh, uh, the corresponding tile we pass in and the width and the height of the piece so let's jump in. Oh, there's also a start game button here, but it has no functionality yet. So now let's let jump into the tile component. So here are the props that I mentioned. And maybe before we jump into the tile component, we should go through the helper functions that I have done beforehand. So it's also important some of the constants here. And here I found a neat function from a similar project and I wanted to link it here uh, to give credit to them as well because they also made a nice implementation of this but I, I changed mine a little bit. So is solvable. That is because when we randomize the board we want to make sure that it's solvable still. And if it's not solvable we just randomize again. Here's a helper function to check if for the win condition. Uh, here is a function where we can pass in a row and a column, basically a coordinate, and we can get the index of that one, basically giving us the number of the tile, but uh, of course minus one since the index starts at zero. Here we have a function called get matrix position. And that will pass back an object with the row and column for a specified index. So that is basically the same as get index but backwards. 
here is a helper function to get the visual position and that is because we're absolute we're going to absolute or we are absolute positioning the tiles so we need to calculate what each position has in pixels and here is our shuffle function so we shuffle the tiles here is the the sort by random so it shuffles them up and checks if it's solvable and that it's not uh, giving us an already solved um, mix and then returning the shuffle tiles here is a helper function to check if we can swap tiles basically are you pressing a tile adjacent to the empty slot or not and here is the fo function that actually does the swap of the tiles that moves the tile into the empty slot and here is another helper function that we're going to use in the end because I want to have the functionality that we can specify our own image and use that as the background instead of just having this red background and these numbers. I want to have the functionality of using your own image to make it a little, more, a little bit more fun. So this function uh, we can use that later to update the image uh, as a URL parameter because what that allows us to do is to pass a link to someone and have them play the game with an image that we choose in our link. So basically you add your own image and you copy the link, send to a friend and then, then can play with whatever image you've chosen. And that's it for the helper functions. So now we have a good starting point to, to implement the React functionality to get this all to work. So let's start at the board. We see here that in order to create the tiles, we take an empty array, these brackets here. We instantiate an array with the length of the tile count and we spread it out in here. So that gives us an array of the correct size. And of course, one of the first things that we want to do is that we, when we start the game, we want to shuffle all the tiles. Because now they are, they are in a solved order because we're just creating this array here. So we'll create a function inside this component called shuffle tiles. And this one now we're, we need to import that function from helpers. And what did we call it? We called it just shuffle and we should pass in the tiles. So we import shuffle from dash helpers. There we go. Now we have shuffle, shuffle and the tiles. And then once we shuffle the tiles, and we know that we get a nice shuffle from this, uh, from what I mentioned earlier. So we get back the shuffled tiles, and then we call a set state. So we set the tiles to these shuffled tiles. This is now, this is now a neat little function we can use to now we connected this helper function to the state of the React app, so that, that's great. We should also have a function for when we click a tile to get it to, to swap places. So we'll call that swap tiles. So now we're going to write our swap tiles function and first we're going to check with the can swap function is if we can swap that tile. Um, 
so let's look at the can swap. So we're supposed to pass a source index and a destination index. So the tile index passed in here is the tile that has been clicked on. So can swap. The first the source is tile index, the one that's been clicked on. And the empty tile is always the last one. We're using tile 16. Tile 16 is always the empty one. So we just have to pass tiles.length minus one. So we'll check can the clicked on tile move to the position where the last tile is. Remember this has been shuffled so the empty slot will be somewhere and we're making sure that we press a tile that can move into that position of the empty one. So if we can, then we can call the swap. So let's look at the swap function. So we, we're supposed to pass all the tiles and the source and destination. And this is also indexes. So we we'll pass tiles and then tile index and tiles dot length minus one. That should swap the tile into that position. And I think from that we get all the tiles back. So we need to save what we get back from this. Post swapped tiles. And then we need to set tiles to swapped tiles. So hopefully that should work as well. We should have a separate function to handle the click of the tile. Handle tile click. So this is the first function that will be called once a tile is clicked. And that one gets the index of the tile clicked. Index. So we call, we try to call swap tiles and just pass along the index. Let's make a similar one to handle shuffle click. And this one does not have to take any parameters. And here we call shuffle tiles. So now we have these two functions. We need to attach them to I think this one will be attached to like a shuffle button and this one will be attached to tiles that we click when we play the game. We should have a piece of state to check if, um, if we solve the game or not. Solved is solved. Set is solved. state and the default should be false and probably let's also have this started so that because why we have is started is so that we can show the finished puzzle before someone starts the game so you can see what you're aiming for or memorize a bit what the image looks like. Let's try to keep it as one button but we can change the behavior of the button dependent on the is started and so on. So if it's not started we can just have this 
start game button. So is started. If is started is true, then also render this start game button. And we add an on click to that one with const handle start click. I mean, these small functions, you can choose to have them just in line here if you want to. Handle start click. So inside this one, we want to first shuffle the tiles and then set the game to started so shuffle tiles and then set is started to true and if we are started actually this should be if we're not started we should show this button then we can do it like this. If is started, we show this button, and then we can make a ternary operator to show another button. So if we're not started, we show the start game button. If we are already started, we can show a restart game button. And then we don't have to... Then we can call the handle shuffle click, because if we restart the game, all we have to do is reshuffle the game, basically. So handle shuffle click. So the first time you click start game, it shuffles and it sets the start to true. And if you restart the game, you only shuffle the tiles. So now we're using both of these functions here. So this last function, handle tile click, that one we want to pass into a tile so that the tile can use it. Handle tile click. click okay great so now we have some of the logic here so let's validate that it works is started so we console log is started here and let's make a little note of what we're console logging is started so let's go to our console here we might have an error maybe. NPM start. Let's see what errors we have so far. Maybe some unused variables. Tile is not defined. Swap tiles is not defined. Tiles should be. And swap tiles on line 20 swap tiles and now we just have two unused variables so now we can actually see that the starter is false and we press start game it does shuffle it and it changes to restart game and if I press restart game it should shuffle the board again that's great Perfect. So what we've done so far seems to work. We can start the game, we can shuffle the game. So now we can move into the tile. So we need first to handle the tile, handle tile click. So we receive that as a prop. Handle 
tile click and we should attach that to the tile itself so on click click and we should pass in the index and that one we did get from the tile here index so no errors so now let's try clicking one yeah it almost seemed to work it worked for the, my first click But not more than once so we're probably close but there must be some error somewhere something is wrong with the swap tiles so can swap must evaluate it true the first time at least swap uh, swap tiles Let's console log them and see what happens. So, the first time it did work, and the second time, nothing happens. Okay, so I think I understand the error. Now, the, the index of the last tile will change. So, instead of just passing in the last one all the time we should do tiles.index of so we're basically searching for the index of number 15 in the list because what I saw from here was that if the, la the open slot switches then it doesn't have the last index anymore. So when we do tile tiles.index of, then we're searching in the list for the index of 15 instead of just passing in the last spot. That's why it only worked the first time. So let's try this again. Oh, and it's the same thing here, actually. So now let's try. Yeah, now it works much better. So let's see if I can move 15 up to the beginning here. Yeah, seem to work okay. So now the swap tiles seem to work. But you might have seen that I can start to play the game from uh, the start state. But we should check if the game has been started. Because otherwise you can just do this and then you're done. But let's wait with doing that. Because we want to test the win condition. And it's very easy for us to test the win condition if the game is uh, already started in at this stage. I think we don't even need this to be a piece of state because we're not going to call set is solved. We can just derive that by using our helper function. So let's remove that piece of state and instead we just set a constant here is solved uh, and then we import is solved from this helper function we import is solved from the helpers and we do is solved and we, I guess we pass in the tiles Yeah, we, we just pass in the tiles. So 
here we can do is solve and we're gonna add a check for is started here but let's first just do it with only is solved we can add is started after because then we can check that is solved actually works puzzle solved and let's add some fun emoji as well So let's see if this comes out. We should rename this to something that is not the same as the function. Has one. Has one. Yeah, so this is a solved state. This is not a solved state. And back into the solved state. So now we can add a check that is started here. So both of these need to be true. So now it should have disappeared again. And now that we have a started to be true, if it would be solved again now, we would get the message back. So I think we can say that is solved. The win condition is also finished now. The next part, I think we should add some smooth animations npm install react motion so now we have react motion installed here and we're going to use that in our tile component so let's import motion and spring from react motion so then we wrap this whole thing in a motion component and we need to come up with this motion style variable to tell it how it should move to get some nice bounciness to it and then we say visual position x so inside motion we cre we create this function and as inputs we get the values that are going to be animated so I will move this closing to after the li so instead of using the tile style here now we can use the values that react motion gives us and they will be animated over time. So let's see if anything changed now. No. Five minutes later. Oh, I'm stupid. I stopped the build to install the motion. So stupid. Don't be like me. You have to be smarter than me. Such an idiot sometimes. Okay, so now we have the new code running. And now it does work. Nice. So this is like a little bit of a spring effect. That looks much better. And now 
we should do the the most fun part of the build to create the custom image for the background. I think it will also be the most challenging part, but I think it would be really cool if we made it work. So let's go to the app here. And under the app, we should have an input component. And we need some state to keep track of the image URL. Use state. So const image image and set image. Use state. And let's set it empty to begin with. Let's call it image URL for clarity. So the value of this is image URL. And we need an on change. Uh, handle image change. Let's create that function. Close handle image change. And we get an event. So we set the image URL to e.target.value to get the value from the input box. And if we change that, we want the URL in the address bar to follow along with it. So we do window.history.replace state. And we just pass empty strings for data and title. And now for the URL, we're going to use our helper function that I mentioned. Import update URL blah blah blah. What was the name of it? Update URL parameter. Parameter from helper. Helpers. There we go. So here, to get the new URL back, we can do update URL parameters. And what was the function? It was URL, param, and param value. So to get the current URL, we can do window.location.href. And the parameter name, we can call that image. And the value that is image URL. Or I guess, no, it's not image URL. It's e, e target value. Because the we're just changing the image URL here. So it's not changed yet. So we instead of image URL, we do e target value here as well. Hmm. So now we should update the state and we update also the URL in the address bar. But we also need to have a use effect because on page load we want to take, let's say that you pass a link to your friend with this specific image. On page load, we need to update the React state from the address bar if there is an image URL set. And for that, we're going to use a use effect. So we do use effect
And if since this is just going to be called once, we put empty braces here. That will cause it to run once. So const URL params. To get the URL params, we can do new URL search params and we pass in the window dot location dot search. So now we have an object here. So we can do if URL params has image. Then we know that there's a value for us to fetch. We set image URL to URL params get image. So then the game state should be updated to the image that we have the URL for in uh, as a URL parameter. Um, here is an error in the URL. Hmm. Okay, uh, let's see, do we have any errors? Update URL parameter. What was it called then? Okay, big letters. What about now? Okay, the emojis should have spam roll image. Yeah. Okay, so now let's try it out. So here we see no URL parameters yet. Test image. See, once I started typing there, it added a URL parameter uh, called image and value is what I wrote in the text box. So let's try to change it and reload the page and see if it gets loaded in. ABCD and reload. Yeah, and it's being set on page load here. So that's perfect. So now the last step is to take this image URL and place it as the background here in the puzzle. But as you can see, we can't just fit it on all of this because it's separate tiles. So we need to calculate small parts of it by using like the, the background size and background position of it. So I think uh, we need to go into the tile style here. So uh, we also need to pass in this image URL. So we pass it in here. Image URL is image URL. And also from board to tile. Image URL. Image URL. And we make sure that we take it in here as well. And here, image URL. So now we have image URL here in the tile style. So we set background image is and we need to wrap this in Since it's in CSS here, we need to wrap it like this to tell CSS that this is a URL. And then we need to calculate the background size. Background size. So we do, first it's the width, 
the background size I get it should be the board size board size Pixels and now the trickiest part. Position. So we should do this in percent. So we'll do hundred divided by grid size so 100 divided by 4 in percent so will be 25 percent and then we need to we need to add 25 percent depending on what the index is so this will be 25% and we multiply that by the X position and to get the X position we need to do index module grid size. So it should still shift by 25% but it should jump one spot for each four increase by 4 of the index so oops I'm, I'm blocking it grid size and then percent what are the chances that, that this would work probably very slim so now we should find a square image since our board is square we should use a square image let's try this smiley one here copy picture address let's make sure it works yeah that work. that seems good and we paste it here it did not work so let's debug this and see that we have image here and here console.log image in tile image URL. we do have the image in the tile uh, oh wait we're not adding these to the tile style so instead of doing this we can do tile style we spread it oh that is close it's very close and it does shift so we can't use the index here we should we shouldn't use the index we should use the tile value because that is the number that the tile has and not the index I'm blocking you again uh, not the index which you use the tile so now see now it sticks to the tile number not the index cool so I have to try try this out a bit and I think this will only work <laughs> if it's just for a grid by four but for this tutorial let's just use this I think it's good enough right so now I should be able to send this link to a friend and when they open it they get my custom image and they can start the game and then they can play it and try to figure it out that's awesome i think i think we're actually done with the game finally this was a long tutorial and it was quite confusing 
So hopefully it made sense from time to time. So if you enjoyed the video, please thumbs up the video, make a comment. And also I was thinking since we can share this puzzle, after I deploy it, I will add the link to the live site in the description. And then we can actually post links in the comment and come up with really fun images to try to solve in this sliding puzzle. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.